Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to the Warfarm live R&D session. My name is Shenhui Yang. Uh, I work for Warfarm Alpha team, and uh, I would like to uh, solve challenging math problems during uh, the work time and uh, off the work time, because I really like those uh, interesting problems and you can find on the uh, uh, internet. And uh, I have done a couple of the uh, um, problem solving sessions during Wolfram uh, conference, and most of them are already on YouTube. So you can just uh, uh, find the Wolfram uh, technology channel and find those uh, problem solving sessions if you are interested in uh, those challenging problem solving techniques and how to use Wolfram language and uh, other resources to help you understand the solutions and uh, promote your understanding of uh, what's behind and the background of those problems. Okay, so today I'm going to um, uh, sh first introduce why I'm uh, going to uh, give such type of uh, lectures and online session or uh, conference talks, because uh, I found recently, uh, you know, everything get more um, like uh, comp competitive during the industry in the industry and in the education system. Okay, so uh, students uh, or other uh, math enthusiasts, enthusiasts, they will find um, the things they learned before probably is not enough, not good enough for them to understand the harder problems or, uh, practically speaking, get, get them in, into uh, elite schools or programs because. They need to uh, deal with harder problems to pass the selection process. And um, there are many problems uh, will be available in uh, all kinds of uh, uh, online resources and the summer school problem across the world. Uh, some of them are really uh, challenging and selective. For example, like AME, uh, AIME, uh, Promise and Smack are very popular programs that uh, students all over the world are very interested in, uh, including Wolfram Summer School. So there are uh, many um, hard problems they want to, to solve. And uh, you, eventually you will get, for example, like Amy, uh, you need to get a, a top 2.5% uh, to, uh, to be, uh, to, uh, to, to top 2.5 percent in the AMC 10 to be selected as student that you can participate in Amy, and uh, after that you will be uh, need to complete lots of hard problems so that you will be elected for USMO. Okay, so uh, for those hard problems, uh, including uh, like uh, SMAC problems, and the the background you can check with uh, uh, Wolfram language in using Wikipedia data, and you will find the background of these programs. And they always give you very challenging and interesting problem to solve. So this, uh, when you actually in the, in the uh, exam, you, you are like exam takers, and you can only do with a pencil, eraser, ruler, and a compass. It's just like what a mathematician does for 2,000 years ago. But the, uh, I mean, if you can solve that with uh, those rudimentary method, that'd be great. But for lots of people, uh, I feel like even the solution is just uh, very hard to understand if you don't have any technology to support you. And uh, this is uh, basically the purpose of uh, of this type of se session I'm, ma I'm making right now. Uh, because with the, the Wolfram technology, you can easily uh, visualize and um, because I'm a visual learner and uh, visual, visualization great helps you to understand the problem. The other thing is those programs like to give you problems from uh, combinatorics, number theory, uh, or discrete calculus. It's basically pioneered by uh, Knuth and uh, he talks about lots of uh, um, computer science related discrete math calculus, a uh, discrete mathematics like computer uh, computatorics. But what's the difference is discrete calculus requires you to do some calculus related things, which I mean in higher uh, in higher math it's uh, 
uh, take the limit, or you do things about asymptotics, which is uh, covered greatly in the Wolfram language after uh, version 12. And uh, we have algebra and analysis uh, for um, things that you can model by differential equation, basically. Um, and then um, if you work with those problems and uh, typically you read the solutions, one of the biggest problem is uh, you don't know where the solution come from. Um, the, because they usually prove either by contradiction or using constructive method to create a solution. And this solution, this solution usually looks like it comes from nowhere. So I think using software, uh, typically Wolfram language greatly helps you to understand where these problems and the typically the solutions come from. For example, uh, in one of the community uh, community article I just released, it's talking about a single problem, but involves the arrangement, pigeonhole principle, modular arithmetics, or, or modular arithmetics, and the cyclic psych, uh, cyclic uh, permutations. It's something like you. It's a, a baby course in uh, group theory. Okay, uh, but these ideas and uh, concepts are really abstract. If you don't do any simulation or experiment to help you understand what's behind it. You know, you need to also throw in a bunch of uh, uh, parameters that you can change so that you can see how these parameters change the solution and how it affects our solution seeking process. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to just give you some of the examples during this, um, um, during this talk. And these problems are selected from usually these uh, uh, very elite resources. So you can try to understand and read uh, the code and play around the problems and learn how you can come, come up with a solution by yourself. And this is a very important because math, I think it's just like engineering or other experimental science. To some point, logic and uh, the uh, sort of deduction is just not enough. So you need to work with some of the cases, typically with uh, com number theory, combinatorics, and uh, you know the, this, this set, uh, this branches of the mathematics. Uh, it's really hard to find a systematic way to, to solve all the problems. You just need to uh, play around with some of the uh, simple cases and eventually you, know what to do and uh, probably you find us a uh, result and then you can link it to some online resources someone maybe um, already solved it but it's just very difficult if you just want to uh, describe them verbally i'm going to show one of the problem like that in the in the session okay so here are my uh, previous talks uh these all have uh, uh, uh youtube links so uh, you can click that or you can just check that uh, it's is here. So if you have the notebook, you just click that and you will be able to uh, review the past uh, problem solving sessions on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Now let's first start uh, with, uh, without further ado, let's start from uh, a very fresh uh, Amy problem uh, this year. So let me just quickly uh, explain what's going on here. So there are five men and nine women sitting equally spaced around the circle in random order. Uh, so that means you have to sit on the um, uh, the points or the vertices of a regular point polygon. So for example, the four people, you must sit on a square, okay? Five people, uh, you sit on the vertices, vertices of a pentagon. So uh, you always, that's equally spaced uh, means on the circle. So, um, the, the probability, so basically we are going to find the, the probability where the, every man sits diametrically opposite to a woman. Okay, uh, the, the last part is basically the, the style of uh, uh, Amy. So you, are need, you need to find um, a solution that's between uh, M from uh, 000 to 999. You, you have to write three digits. So this this is a, the type of uh, the the format of a answer that's required in Amy. But eventually, the problem just uh, ask about the probability that every man sits diametrically opposite to a woman. 
Okay, let's see uh, the simulation here. So assume uh, men are uh, men are red, uh, and ladies are blue. Uh, so these are the simulated results. Okay, and this also uh, contribute. This is after you learn this how you program uh, this this problem. This uh, uh, it will give you a huge boost in uh, uh, in in language uh, the Wolfram language programming skill because this is related to a very typical problem is generate. A uh, random permutation with the uh, restrictions. So without the restriction, you basically just uh, randomly permute the, the, the dots on uh, um, on the circle. Okay, but my requirement is uh, you can have blue to blue. Say you get one eight is a uh, blue to blue is diametric. Okay, uh, but you cannot have red to red. The so red must opposite to uh, uh, blue point okay so there is a no uh, no red to red okay so that's the that, that's the constraint so you need to find the the correct probability that's generate this type of uh, permutation and we want to generate this type of permutation efficiently because uh the worst part uh, the worst uh, method in uh, this type of permutation generation is by rejection you know because some of the uh like the likelihood of a certain type of occurrence is very slim. So if you generate all the permutation, which usually is unfactorial, that's going to just eat up your RAM very quickly. So it's not even possible to generate everything. So you want to uh, generate things just uh, without re rejection. So you want to, your algorithm always generate the, the proper thing, okay? But you can add some randomness because there are multiple uh, um, set multiple cases that's satisfying the solution at the same time. So of course you can find the AOPS link on this problem. It's Amy problem. Everything is documented on that, but we were going to show you how, how you program that in uh, Wolfram language very soon. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, work on the random constrained permutation. First, let's assume there is a 14 people. You always need a, they always need a, a even number because for example, you take five five people, like uh, you put them on a regular pentagon. Uh, well, there are no people sitting diametrically, okay? Uh, because you connect two, uh, two vertices of a regular pentagon, and none of them are going to pass the center of the circle. So uh, you also have an even number. And, and uh, we generate all the, num uh, all the members. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, two, four, uh, 14. And the key here is uh, we need to first uh, put seven people uh, put people in the seven diametric uh, brackets. So it's the so before you put people on the seat because we know uh, every so the proper uh, seating is paired by a diametric thing. So you basically generate the the diametric brackets first. So one, if men, if someone, men sit in uh, one, eight must be a, a lady. So one lady. So it's red point, blue point, or red point, blue point. Okay. So the, these are the brackets that, because in that way, if you select a five, a seven, a five brackets out of seven, you always guarantee that there is only one man uh, sitting in one bracket. And here is a quick comment about this problem. You can't have like more than half of the people uh, are male because by pigeonhole principle, if you say you have eight people, eight, eight men, but you only have seven brackets. So guaranteed there are at least one bracket with two red points or two males. So that that will be a zero probability. Okay. You you won't have any anything like that happen uh, properly. Uh, or and trivially, okay. So you always need to let be have less than half of the uh, uh, population uh, is is male, and then you 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 select a, a five of seven brackets above. Uh, so what I what I say, and randomly choose one of the binary seating position because binary seating is you can either choose one or eight, two or nine. So you you choose a bracket and um, and find uh, the the proper the 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 whether it's one or, or two, or one or eight, okay? So you, you do that, 
And once you put the uh, five men in the brackets for all the uh, uh, women, uh, you can just uh, let them sit randomly. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, selection process. And then the, this thing comes to uh, the visualization. You you create a diametric link. So these links are just the uh, dash lines in our graph. Okay, and and you link them, and that's. There you go. Then you have a, a graphics. That's I probably need to uh, increase the font. Okay. So this gives you a, a proper uh, seat arrangement for the uh, for the uh, for the problem. Okay. The, this one will generate the uh, the proper seating, and this is very important because um, as we progress, we'll see that the, uh, the probability is very low for this type of uh, uh, seating to be available as the whole population grows up. So you always want to use something like this to generate the brackets first. So you guarantee always you generate a random uh, permutation that satisfy the proper seatings. And then uh, let's just uh, create the diagram we see here. You just uh, wrap wrap up all the code, just copy everything we had before and uh, put them in the table. So, so uh, put them in the, in the random uh, uh, function. So we can just uh, generate, run the whole things uh, multiple times. Okay. So these are the uh, 16, uh, 16 um, seats that's randomly generated so we can have all, all the random permutations satisfy the uh, diametric seating requirement. Okay, the, they all satisfy. Okay, there's uh, no waste. Uh, I don't have anything to reject. So this is the most efficient algorithm to generate because you know no, nothing's get wasted. So uh, this would generate very efficiently for even very large uh, seating seating uh, with, with the, like 400 people sit there. You can just uh, do that without, you know, eat up all the all the RAMs in your computer. So it also works fine with uh, like the most, I think the most mainstream type of uh, 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 laptops you have like 16 gigabytes RAM, 500, uh, 500 uh, gigabytes of, uh, you know, uh, SSD and i7 or i5, Eighth gen of that, it's just it, even for enormous numbers, it, this algorithm generate uh, permutation with uh, such a requirement on the fly. Okay, so that's everything we wrap it up for the Amy problem because they just ask you about 15 or like small numbers. But we can go a little bit further uh, to see how this um, problem uh, evolves if we have uh, lots of people, like 10,000 people. You know what, what's going on? What, what, what's going? What's going to be uh, the the property that we are going to observe for really large input? So let's see. Um, say if we have uh, two m people um, and uh, lambda m men, lambda is a parameter because uh, the the most of the thing we have, for example, is uh, uh, the the worst case we have is one hundred men and one hundred. Uh, uh, woman. Okay, so it's fine to have one man and a 199 woman. Okay, because uh, that will always give you uh, the red blue requirement uh, we have uh, in the in the problem. But uh, the uh, so as n goes to very large, uh, the the maximum proportion of a man is n. You know, one n over two n it is uh, 50 percent. So that that's why I choose uh, the the parameter looks like this. It's two n and uh, lambda n, and the uh, the lambda is to make sure the man strict less than half of the group. Okay, that's what we do here. So let's see uh, the parameters. How uh, the how the uh, asymptotic things behaviors if we change if we let n goes to infinity and uh, have uh, lambda here. Okay. Uh, okay. So this give you. Uh, the asymptotic, the asymptotic expression of the uh, of the uh, probability to have uh, this, the required seating style. 
And let's simplify that. Uh, so this is the, uh, the result. And let's see, um, so you once you have asymptotics, uh, you want to basically check that if the asymptotic uh, uh, expression gives you the same result as the um, as the uh, a brute force or, or a direct computation. Uh, this is a very important because uh, for some of the problems, like uh, typically in combinatorics, for example, if you want to compute n factorial, you know, given 10,000, so one times two times three times, and you go times 10,000. Uh, that's a really large number. You know, usually your computer cannot handle that. And even uh, Mathematica can do that sometime, but uh, if you do that, you know, intensive computation, it just costs too much time, you know. And you will always get an overflow if you want to do direct computation for uh, computatorics with a large number. But I still want to know the behavior of an factory if it goes really large. So I will kick in, you use asymptotics to find a sterling number for that. You can check on uh, Wikipedia. It's very well known. It will give you a very simple um, expression to show the behavior of factory. And as we do same thing here but for binomials uh, and exponentials and uh, binomials. So it will give you a very uh, simple uh, expression to compute that. Okay, so let's see, for example, let's uh, affix n to 100 people and change lambda. So let's see how lambda, so this means like only 5% of the, 5% uh, 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 divided by two, that's 2.5% uh, of people are male. These are like slightly close to 50% of people uh, of the population are male. And if we increase n, um, if you fix n, we can see that as we increase the number population of the male, uh, the probability to generate the required seating style is vanishing very quickly. I need to just make it a little larger. Uh, you can see, uh, you can see it's somehow it's tiny here, but you can see that the number is 10 to the minus of 15. So this is on log plot. So this is a uh, means uh, if you have, let's say, for example, 40% uh, um, of 0 0.8 means uh, means 40%. You need to divide it to. They're less than 10 to the uh, 10 to the power of negative 10 probability. That's you will need to find a uh, uh, proper seeking. So it's just really not possible to do a uh, direct uh, computation and enumerate everything. Uh, but we can compare the result, the, the curve, with that from the uh, direct computation, okay? They look almost the same, okay? You, you check on 0 0.8, it's still less, much less than a 10 to the power of negative 10, so they, they, they match very well. So let's uh, just can increase a little more. So if we, uh, if we just do some special cases, so if we have like, 50% 50 50 of people are, are male. So what's the result? Well, well you get a, a much nicer, uh, much nicer uh, 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 expression for that case. So uh, this is as, for example, if you have uh, 100 people, uh, or you have like 10,000 people. And what's the probability that you find a seating uh, with, uh, you know, diametrically constrained? with 50% uh, of a uh, male. So, and you take like 5,000, you immediately can tell the thing is a two to, on the magnitude of two to the power of uh, minus 5,000. Okay, you don't need to do any computation here, but you just uh, plug in the number. You, and uh, it's, you, because that number is so tiny, you, you just take the logarithm of that to get uh, the, the, the feeling of, of that number. So this number, again, uh, decays very, very quickly. And uh, to, uh, so here is the difference between this graph and the, the previous one. So this one is a fixing number, but the change of the proportion of uh, male and females, okay? So this thing is a uh, fixed uh, proportion, so like 50% of it, but the change of the number of the population, okay? and because it's 2n, okay? So it's, uh, it's just uh, uniquely determined by n, okay? So we've specified the number of uh, males, so 
the whole population is doubling that. So this is the, uh, the result. And what's more important here is not about the actual expression here, you know, it's really doesn't mean that much to me. But the thing is, it tells you that the proportion, uh, the, the likelihood of such seating changes not only with respect to the proportion of men and the women, but also depends on the whole population. Okay, that's not something they asked the, uh, during the Amy problem. You know, we, 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 once we do that, we, we would see um, this thing actually, that's the, that's the uh, key to, to understand the problem. Okay, so this uh, also shows you, the, 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 this part shows you that as n increases, the estimate from our uh, asymptotic behavior is very close to the direct computation. It's uh, eight out of uh, ten thousands. Okay. Okay. So if this is also another special, um, uh, another special uh, case is uh, if you have a quarter of the group are male. So this is what you do, and uh, you can have uh, this expression. And you simplify that, and then you you have that. And then if you go do more and more, you will find a very interesting expression is just a two to the power of negative five, three to the power of three. And if you do that, you have more such things. But eventually you will find this thing is always less than zero. So this gives you the, uh, uh, the idea that eventually you will have something like some, some power uh, to the power n, and, uh, some, some number to the power n. And this, this number uh, is something generated by this, in which is a less than one, because that's the logarithm of that number. It's negative, so it means that number is a less than one. Uh, that number determines the, if, regardless of what you kind of a, um, parameters you set for this, num for this problem, it always decays. It always decays very fast, like exponential. So, and this uh, gives give you idea. And, but the different N of uh, lambda will give you different decaying rate. So that's the key of uh, asymptotic analysis in this problem. Okay, and then, then I have some, uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, something like a half lifetime, half life decay for this problem. What's the 50% chance for diametric seating if we have 200 people or 10,000 people? So, um, so for 200 people, let's just enumerate everything here. You will see that if we have 16 uh, of them are male, uh, we will have close to 50% of chance that you can generate uh, the diametric CT. For if we increase to 10, uh, with them, uh, the, pro uh, the, uh, the proportion of men must uh, reduce to 2.7%. Uh, so that's the meaning of this calculation here. So with uh, this software, you do you can do many interesting things to explore much more deep behind the problem. Okay, so that's uh, I think a problem one. We, we will split these uh, things to um, uh, many couple sessions because I want to just uh, let you understand uh, very deep things about the problem. And just let me quickly look at the the chat. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm glad uh, you like it. Hey, let's uh, move to the second problems. Um, because mo most of the problems are independent. So uh, once we fit, if we can split easily to multiple uh, such live R&D sessions, uh, if we don't have enough time to cover everything. And you have the notebook uh, um, after the session. And also some of the notebook I was post on, um, just separated them and um, put on uh, individual blogs on Wolfram community. Just uh, uh, you, see, you have seen like this, uh, it's published yesterday. So it's a nice one to read. It's such a simple problem that covers very diversity topics in combinatorics. It's uh, just a great thing to have a Wolfram language visualization tools. To, I just uh, designed that that uh, diagram with some of the Wolfram function or positive function to make a very nice and uh, informative uh, uh, thing to show what's behind 
this pair, uh, sort of puzzle. Uh, what's the solution? Uh, what's the idea behind the solution on the puzzle? Okay. So let's uh, start with the second problem. It's a problem from Promise, but you know, because the internet is so, so big, okay? And uh, social media, like AOPS, and even on TikTok, people start to share math problems, obviously. So you easily have uh, duplicates. So if you see enough, you probably will encounter the same problem in different uh, competition or different uh, uh, selection sections. So this is a very interesting problem uh, from uh, Promise 2023 and the Bangladesh uh, MO 2001. I saw that first on uh, um, uh, Michael Pence's channel. He, he talked about that. Uh, I think it's a fun problem. And I, I, it's if you also search repeating integers on, uh, on uh, 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 MSE, Mathematica Stack Exchange, you will see this problem as well. But we will give you a, a general way to generate it. Uh, such a sufficient condition to generate uh, lots of uh, ridiculous things, ridiculous things. Okay, so um, so how how many positive integers can you find? Okay, they're they're actually infinity, but but we put we pretend we don't know the solution yet. Okay, so uh, for what I've said is um, discrete or number theory stuff. You always get, do that by testing the numbers. Okay. You you do that by 2023 or 2023, okay? Uh, it's of, of course, uh, this function is not necessary, okay? I just find the MSE in case I need it, but I find it's, I can skip that in the, in the, in the, in the problem. So it means, but, but just to give you a good name, you know, perfect square cube. Okay? Uh, is it a perfect square cube? Uh, it's not, okay? You, you do that and you just uh, take the square root. It's not integer, that's, uh, that means it's not okay. So what what it mean, the the echo means here is quite obvious. You just repeat the number in the connected. You go one eleven is a eleven echo number. Okay, one one twenty two is you have two two. Okay, so you generate all the uh, the two digits stuff. So of course, just like uh, the previous problem, we we only need a um. Oh, uh, someone asked the best way to learn Wolf language for solving math problem. Just follow this channel, I think. I, I actually answered like 300 problems on uh, AOPS before with uh, 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 Wolf language. So uh, if you're lucky to find me, so you will see, you can start from uh, reading those solutions. Um, so this gives you, um, it, you know, it, it's kind of silly, you know, just uh, repeat this number. So in the previous number, we will say that the number of the population must be even the same case here because you duplicate a number. All right, so you must have even digits. You must have even digits, okay? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, eight, eight, eight nine, nine, okay? Uh, and then you you do that for 10, uh, you, you, like uh, this is uh, four digits, okay? Four digits, four digits. One, oh, one, oh, one, 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 two, one, two, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Okay, so you test everything. Okay, the, the, the easy way to do that is just uh, uh, let me just define this one again. Uh, here we go. The union false. Okay, uh, if you have anything like true, it will just give you true. So everything is false. It's just uh, you union all the solutions, you find the union of, uh, uh, of all the solutions, and it is false. Okay, so it's 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 false. Okay, so it, which means it's not possible to do that with uh, such type of uh, thing. If you are exam takers, you know, you, it's not possible for you to test uh, nine nine hundred ninety nine uh, uh, to to like uh, even ten thousand number. Uh, let's do that again for even more uh, because Mathematica will work can handle more more pro more numbers. So uh, a hundred a hundred that's uh, six digits. Okay, six digits. Uh, you do that, it's a false again, so none of them are, are false. So, uh, now we're going to give you a, 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 a perfect square, and then you, uh, you, you do that. And if you, if you conclude that, that thing, uh, if you conclude, you know, or you test a, a million number and none of them are right, you know, you, you feel like, well, it's probably nothing exists. But very obviously that if you plug this numbers in the, if you plug this number in the calculator, uh, you repeat that number and take the square root of that number. Uh, so let me just show you how to type this number. Uh, command C. Okay. 
delete it, copy, copy. Okay. It is integer. You see, this shows you this number is a perfect square. And if you, if you don't believe me, uh, you can just uh, uh, take this, uh, let, 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 let this guy times itself. See, this is the exact number you have. Uh, you can you can just uh, compare that and digit by digit, and then so this is number obviously. So yeah, at least you can find one. You know. It's quite obvious because you can test it directly from uh, uh, the, the calculator. So let's see how you find this number. There are a couple steps because first uh, is that um, you need to uh, generate. Um, some numbers, you know, just uh, find some numbers that probably would be candidate. But by looking at the uh, the 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 way I generated this number, so it's i times by a thousand of one. Okay, so if you do that incrementally, you know, by checking uh, if, like this number and the, by one or two or something like that. Uh, you will probably won't get have enough time to find it in your lifetime. So uh, we will need uh, some smarter way to do that. Is uh, uh, we we factor this number. We factor this number. The key is uh, if you have um, say uh, this number, okay, for for four digits. Uh, this is four digits. It's a b times one hundred one. So you must have one hundred one uh, is. Um, uh, factor of a b, which is not possible here. Okay, because you want this number to be perfect square. So one hundred one is a prime number. You need a uh, one hundred one in a b for it to work. Okay. So what if uh, one uh, one something zero one is not a square? Uh, is not a prime. So for example, these are guys are not not primes. Are uh, not primes. So, you know, you can uh, you can find a factorization for that. Okay. But none of them work. You you can just uh, test it. The issue is that uh, everything above this guy, and number eleven, uh, be before this guy, you always have factors, prime factors with at most power equal to one. Okay, so that's the tricky part. So the the idea here is if you want to generate a thing that uh, can be uh, perfect square. As you repeat a part part of that, for example, in uh, with, in, with with this guy, so this this is a uh, this guy. You need some factors to be uh, have uh, even power, even power, because this guy won't affects the uh, perfect squareness of this number. You 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 for example you. You have 16, you divide by four. Four is perfect square. So four left is also perfect square, right? So you get rid of the perfect square, that should be fine. And then you need, a, you have these things. And because this thing, when you multiply together, will have less digits than this number. So it is possible for the, the, uh, the, the product of this number as a, a factor of uh, this guy. So this is how we find it. And then uh, you take that thing out uh, and you, uh, you, you keep all the factors here, okay? But these factors are not enough because if you only, if this number only have these factors, you, you can just multiply that thing out. Uh, you won't have 11 digits. So we need to put some numbers for that to make the 11 digits. So uh, what we do here is we need to do some uh, calculation and find the right one. Uh, okay. Okay, so this number times seven square is 11 digits. Okay. So you, you may ask why we don't, why don't we multiply anything like 12 to that number? Or maybe for example, uh, it's 48 to that number. Okay, make sure this number times this number must be perfect square. So you have to this you have to keep this part and multiply multiplicate a perfect square to have uh, the proper candidate. Okay, that's that's the idea. So uh, if we choose 
seven here and multiply multi uh, five here and five works. So let, let's just um, take it out this number. Uh, and the let the, times the 10 to the power 11 plus one and to find that if it's a perfect square, it is. Uh, you, you just take a square root of this guy and that's the result. If, so this guy times this guy is a perfect square. Okay, so, so you, which means you repeat this number, uh, they repeat this number, uh, I repeat this number and take a square root and you, you multiply this guy, it is the square root, integer, integer square root of, of the number, okay. So can we make the code a little better? Yes, we can. Uh, because with this code, we are not good enough to find this guy. You know, this is way beyond uh, the uh, factor integer stuff in general. So we need to find a better way. So the second, the, the step two is uh, a better way to write the code. It may just make it uh, look uh, look fancier, but it won't handle that large number. It's a, a th number theoretical function called uh, Mobius mu. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much here, but it's well, very well used in uh, analytic number theory. It's basically it tests the square freeness of uh, algorithms uh, uh, of a number. For example, um, 12 is will result in zero because 12 is a two point uh, two times two times three. You have a power two. You have a power two of a two as of power two. So it won't give you anything, uh, anything non-trivial. But non-trivial stuff, you have 15 is non-trivial. 15 is three times five. Three times five is uh, one, three, and one, five. Uh, it gives you one. Uh, uh, let's see, 30 is non-trivial. 30 is two times three times five. But you have three distinct uh, uh, prime factors, so it gives you minus one. So if you have all the number of uh, uh, prime factors, you have uh, minus when you have uh, uh, even numbers, it gives you uh, positive one. If you happen to have anything like uh, two to four in, in, in the factor, it gives you a zero, okay? Anything like 25 is zero, okay? So basically that's what it is. It sounds simple, but it's NP hard. Uh, there is no efficient way to do that. If you find that one, you get uh, maybe Fields medalist for that. Okay, uh, so so this guy gives a zero because we we have we have eleven to the power of two here, so it's expected. So basically, it asks you uh, you need to find uh, um, the things uh, result zero. Okay, yeah, there is another function you can use is a square freeness cube. Square free Q, a square free Q in, in, in Mathematica. So this basically does the same thing here. Uh, let me run that again. So even C50 is uh, really slow. So 11, 21, 33, 39. So 39 is a candidate. So this guy, uh, this guy is, a, is a candidate. And you do the same thing. And uh, because the 13 is, uh, 13 square is the square. So we find any perfect square. Uh, for up to times the leftovers and give you, oh my God, this is a, a give you like 13, uh, uh, give you 30, 39 digits. So basically this is how you do that thing. So it's the same thing. Uh, that's the number you can test. It's, it's perfectly square. For even larger numbers, for even larger numbers, well, why the solution was obvious is because we use number theory stuff again here. So there is a interesting thing that you can check in the factorization is uh, even though the number itself is really not that big, you know, but you do have very large uh, prime factors occurs very early because you know, for example, there are a bunch of more uh, uh, prime factors uh, Let's see, uh, 19, for example, is much less than this guy, but 19, oh, 19, okay, let's do a little bit more. Uh, 73, uh, 70, 77, uh, 37, for example, 37 is, uh, uh, I would say 37, you're not 73, okay, 37 is a much smaller one, but does not occur. The reason is uh, this guy actually gives you very small uh, number in terms of uh, multiplicative order. Do it make it in the ground. 
uh, say 10. Uh, let's see, what's the prime again? This guy. Yeah, it's 24. It's really small. So, which means uh, if you have uh, uh, 10 to the power of 24, uh, mod, you, you basically divide that number. Uh, it gives one. Okay. Uh, the other question is when you know something like this um, have uh, as a candidate with a nine. So basically, it means that this thing is two. So what what time when when it's going to be two? Uh, so that will be a little bit more more difficult because that that number probably occur very late. So we have that. This means 10 to the power of uh, this guy. Oh, sorry. This should be minus one. Oh, it's 12. It's 12. Okay. So, um, so when we have something like this with uh, with this guy, which becomes two. So it contains the factor like this, we make it a two. So let's do that. Uh, square. Okay, it probably takes some time to find it. But that's the idea to find uh, the, 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 inter the integers that satisfy this, uh, uh, satisfy this condition. So th th this is basically how you find some ridiculous number to, to handle that. So let me quickly explain um, the multiplicative order here used here. So in, in, in this case, uh, for 11, uh, 11, okay, uh, let's do that, minus one. So 10 to the 11. So this guy means 11 will work. In this case, uh, eleven will work. So you have two. Okay. So it it is basically let you to solve uh, a residual families that satisfy a certain condition. For instance, um, ten to the power ten mod. This, this this thing basically means oh, what kind of a number you can find for ten to the power of x such that when the mod uh, 17, it is a uh, minus one. So basically they uh, need to ask you to find x, but there are multiple x like that. For, for example, if you say you have like a four, so give you uh, the minus one, okay? But uh, of course 12 will make, make sense because that's minus one times minus one times minus one, so minus one to the power of three. So you ask to find the minimum x that satisfy this condition. So let's take a look at it. This is like eight. Uh, the, where eight comes from is uh, you do that. Okay, you take 10 to the power of zero to the power of one and to the power of eight. And eventually you will have uh, this, guy, this guy. So the, why this is a minus uh, eight? Because minus one occurs at eighth position of the list. Uh, the reason uh, is, uh, is very, uh, much more difficult to, uh, is way beyond the, the, if you have like higher order of 17, like p to the power, or more it's periodic numbers. It's, uh, I actually wrote a blog about that. So you can, if you have a, you are interested, you can read that. It's how periodic number affects the, um, the, uh, the our solution seeking process. So this is a, basically gives you an idea how you find uh, the power over k that works. So in, in this case is if we have 11 to the power of uh, uh, two, it will give you uh, 10 to the power 11 mod this guy equal to minus one. 
So, which means um, you will have uh, uh, the the these guys always work. Well, why you have a uh, okay times twenty two not instead of eleven because twelve uh, twenty two is one. So ten to the power eleven is minus one. So ten to the power of a uh, uh, twenty two is positive one. So you this guy times positive one won't affect its modular result from 11 to the power of two. The other thing I want to point out is uh, if you, sometimes you cannot find a multiple order, it just uh, give you uh, something like this. Because for example, 10 to the, you you, you look for uh, 10 to the power of uh, a zero and a one, you, because it's you only have two options here, right? Uh, none of them will give you the, for example, 10 uh, divided by two, uh, uh, just with modulus, for example, minus one. So it's not possible because 10 is a two times five. Regardless of how you do that, it's always gives you zero. You know, that you won't have a multiplic multiplicative inverse in this situation. So that's that's why um, the, the algorithm is very efficient to uh, to find the proper result because we directly look at the solution, the pattern of the solution in a higher level. And uh, these things are equivalent co-prime false and uh, these are false. False, false, and uh, unevaluated. These three results are identical in my case. So uh, the the ridiculous number I'm looking for is just to plug in uh, k equal to 16. It gives you uh, the result. And uh, you do that, you you you, you can just uh, uh, find the, uh, the integer factors of that number uh, and uh, repeat it and do the test again. So you will have the, the result we have in the, in the list. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's the, the equal of integers. Okay, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's uh, this is my remark, okay. So this is how you find uh, uh, the, the even larger number. Oh, okay, I use this one. It's so much smaller than the one causing problem. So this number uh, works. Uh, is also a good candidate. So if 10, you can find a modular multiplicative inverse of this guy, and you plug this guy in here, this is a valid candidate. Not for the event, the, the, the solution, but it's a valid candidate for, for these guys. Okay. You, you first, because first you need to find this, this, these ones, some zero, one things before you can move on to find the solution. So this, this number uh, is way beyond any, I think any machine you can handle on earth. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, the number of uh, uh, all the atoms in the universe combined comparing to this number is a joke, okay? So there's no way, but with the, uh, Number theoretic, uh, number theor number theoretic thinking, uh, we can confirm this number works. Okay, uh, that, so this uh, is the power of the number theory. Uh, yeah, if, if, to to know to understand these type of problem, probably you want to uh, get familiar with a uh, module arithmetics first. Uh, I think Wolfram language give you um, very nice. Uh, functions, call prime and the GCD stuff, everything you can work with uh, large numbers very easily. And this is the foundation of a cryptography. Uh, if we uh, have uh, another things um, uh, scheduled, I, I think I'm just being fine to comfortable to talk about uh, cryptography with uh, the building functions. And that'd be very nice to, <clears throat> to show you the power of uh, number theory in real life, okay. Uh, the third problem is from promise. Uh, it's a kind of long one. Because I think these, these things require not only you have good math uh, capability, but you also have good reading capability and uh, writing skills, okay. So you, you need to present your solutions very nicely. So uh, this, this problem is basically ask you, you know, you, you have a list of train on, on the track. And uh, the, there's a uh, no overtaking okay so you for example you have a slow train and a fast train moving uh, from uh, uh, left to right okay you're moving left to right so one 
the uh again from left to right. Okay. So if the fast train is on the right, the slow train is on the right, uh, a fast train is on the right, and the slow train is on the left, everything is traveled to the right. Okay. Uh you won't there, you only have you will have two chain of trains because uh the slow ones will, will never uh catch up with the fast one. But if you reverse the order, you know, put uh, the faster train on the left and a slow train on the right. So eventually there is going to be a collision, you know, but the collision is, uh, is not a real world collision because it won't cause any trouble, but the only consequence is uh, the two train will travel at the same speed as the slow train. Okay, you know what I mean? So let's see, uh, there are th if there are three equally spaced trains that give you different speed. So for example, they travel at uh, one, two, three. Okay, from, uh, so one is on the left, the three is on the right. So eventually you will have three trains, okay? Three chain of trains. So it's a, and one chain can be, you know, only with uh, one element. So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, the eventual case. But if you have, uh, say, um uh three three two one three two one okay you, you travel to the to, to the right so eventually you will have uh you will have one chain because uh three hit two for example and uh, they all travel at two uh, two hit one you eventually you hit uh everything becomes one that's you know, the slow train uh but what about uh three uh one three two one three two. One three two is one is really slow on the left, but the three will catch up with the two. So you eventually you have two trains, right? Two chain of trains. So uh, they ask you what's the average uh, of all possible order rings, you know? Uh, so basically, if you have four trains, you have a different permutations, right? And a different permutation and or different initial state determines the number of trains you have eventually. So let's uh, see how we can solve this problem uh, with uh, with uh, uh, the, uh, the simulations. You know, maybe I did not solve it uh, at the beginning, but until uh, 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 but once I have the code, I generate some cases and I throw it into Wolfram Alpha to give me a solution. So that that uh, so even sometimes people preparing for this type of exams, they spend too much time on single problem. And that's bad because for discrete calculus number theory, you want to see more problem as much as many as possible you know so don't don't spend too much too much time on on that one problem and it's really solution is also a very important very important part of uh, the the learning process and then more importantly understanding the solutions okay and finding the connections and this problem gives you everything like that okay so uh if you if you learn anything like a program program uh programming you know uh for this type of uh problem and uh, for long, very long chains, you, you want to break into sub problems. So it's either divide counter, divide conquer. So that's like a recursion. You, you solve, for example, you want to know Fibonacci number at an nth place. Uh, you want to, you, you, you basically computed the two numbers before that and then two numbers before each of them. So this basically this divide and conquer. Uh, or uh, you can do like dynamic program, programming because it's not only divide and uh, divide conquer, you also save the result from your previous sub problems. So eventually you don't need to do the sub problems again, again, again. So you can just use the result from them. So this problem is kind of similar. So if you uh, try to do that for, but because th though they only ask you like three, four, five, seven, but you know, if you, are anyone like interested in math? You easily think about how we do that for 10, 20, or even larger number of n. It's, it's, it's the nature of, uh, of, of your, these uh, like uh, math lovers. So uh, I think the, you, you have a program language, just like a Wolfram language that really helps you to understand this very quickly. So uh, the key is, uh, the, the problem is, uh, so what we can think about easily is if you have one on the left, uh, on the rightmost side, so everything is going to be one chain because you you know even slower uh, some slightly faster train you know they collide together they will be the like the slowest one the slowest one is at least two so um you will have uh, yeah, so eventually everything will catch up to uh, if, if for example you have something three in the middle 
but three will catch up with one and everything becomes one. And you have some you know, leftovers, eventually they will come catch up again with the leftovers because uh, the rightmost chain, because the rightmost chain will be the slowest one right, at speed of one, okay? So if you, it's, it's quite a, quite a obvious, if one is on the right, you eventually you have a, only one chain, okay? That's the extreme case. But how can we extrapolate the extreme case to the leftovers? You know, could, could do more cases. So um, we will we'll think about it. You know, if we have used up one, you know, so what, what about the others? Uh, because if we get rid get rid of the the, the slow things about uh, some of the part of the trains, the slowest one, the slowest train for the leftovers will be one. Okay. Because it, it, it's quite obvious, you know. So that gives you idea about um, this the induction. Okay. So if we extrapolate that the thinking is, it's not about the actual point, the actual number of one. It's about the the slowest number, the smallest number for any leftover train, and it's one. Okay. It's the new one of it because because this is a uh, uh, if we talk about like abstract ideas it's like a countable set you know live finite accountable set you always have the a minimum value and that minimum value will automatically becomes one if you take the slow trains out okay so that gives the idea to create a very simple program it's not necessarily the code golf thing but it's i think it's just simple enough to give you an idea what's going on here you know? so the, the key is if we have a uh, Empty train, we have zero train as uh, zero chain. And sometimes we also have one chain. So one chain, for example, if we have every number available, say like one, two, three, four, if one is to the right, then you will have one chain. Okay. But what if one is not available? What one, one is not available here is you need something like one. So what is one for something like uh, two, four, three, five? So two is one. Okay. So two is one, it must be on the rightmost hand side, then it's the slowest one, then you eventually have one chain. So that, that what it means is if you have the minimum number on the rightmost hand side of the list, you have one chain, okay? And then we do recursive thing is we, to, we need to find where the smallest number in the list. And that number will break the chain into two parts. One is, Something like, for example, uh, if we have six, four, one, three, five. Let's let's just uh, write it down. Uh, six, four, one, two, three. Okay, one is in the middle, so this guy would be something like a one chain or something, right? And this will be another thing. Okay, and then you you call it again because. Uh, this guy is the smallest number, it's on left, and it breaks it into two chains. So eventually you have one, uh, this, this. So basically it will turns to uh, one, two, three, and you eventually you have three chains of, uh, of trains. And then you, you do that, uh, you, you can just uh, use the code to, to do some test, uh, it, it generate, cases for simple cases uh, quickly. And what if we do uh, three case uh, for 10 numbers, it'll give you three chains. So this guy would be one chain and uh, uh, this guy would be one chain because uh, nine hit three would be three and five catch up with uh, 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 three becomes three. And this guy is, uh, everything eventually becomes one. So this is one chain. And two is itself, and this is one chain. So eventually you have three, okay? Uh, we can also work on really large numbers, and like I found, it, it will give you some numbers. You can, you can just quickly check that. Uh, and then how to find the, the averages? Um, I just do brute force for, for small numbers. Uh, uh, oh. Let me just uh, uh, close that. Four. Two. Define that thing first. Clear. Yeah. 
I guess it's going to use some smaller numbers. Yeah. Okay. Rest and give us an idea. That's the that's the distribution of the number. It, it doesn't look very. Uh, it, might, it gives us a general idea about how the number behaves, but it does, it does not give you the actual solution for that. Uh, let's see. Rest is. Look at rest. Okay. Oh, that's uh, that's all the all the all the uh, result here. Uh, let's just do that again uh, for uh, the permutations for all the permutations for one train, two train, three trains, uh, uh, three train, four train, and six trains together. Okay. Then you have a number, a list of numbers, and that's that's all the <clears throat> uh, sort of uh, the possible outcomes. Um, the, the 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 outcomes, and uh, I just ask a number, throw that online, and I find it's uh, this number. So uh, ask what for mouth I did exactly the same. It's uh, it's it's this number. Or either on OEIS or what for mouth I would give uh, using the same idea. Uh, give you an idea, and uh, what what I mean is for uh, connections is if if you have happen to find this number is a famous number, then you're good to go. Um, because this number, uh, you will find tons of literatures about that on, uh, on, on OES or Math World. So it will show you why this number works, why this number generate uh, is associated to our train counting problems. So if you, uh, you know, because there are, uh, uh, the certain number here is uh, not that general, it's required this guy to be two. Uh, you you use uh, the the parameter set it to two. It will give you um, the proper result. So one three eleven fifty two seventy four and one seven six four and so on. And it happens to be uh, the m factorial times harmonic number. So the average number is uh, um, this number divides the harmonic stuff. Uh, divides m factorial. So what you left is harmonic number. So that's the average of the length of the train. Uh, you can you can do that. Uh, that that is should be the same thing as our result. You can seven six one over two eighty. Uh, seven six one over two eighty four uh, for uh, eight train eight, eight trains. So this will give you the the solution for for that. And what's more importantly here is uh, the average actually diverges well, because as this is a well known. Uh, property of harmonic numbers. It diverges very slowly at the, uh, the, res at the rate of a log n, but it diverges. So that's something uh, you can learn from, uh, you can immediately point out for the problems. Um, and then, um, just as I said, if you happen to find this is a famous number, then you have infinity resources to, to learn um, the connection of uh, Sterling numbers, harmonic numbers, and the number of trains we are counting that. So yeah, I think um, uh, you know help, if you just do that by hand, I think it's pretty time consuming to find anything uh, useful. And even if I I have like a number like this, you know, it's not a arithmetic progression or it's not a simple like a power a geometric uh, uh, geometric uh, result ge geometric progression. You know, I I think I probably have hard time to find out what's the number going. I'm not Euler or Lagrange, so uh, I, I need some some technology to help me. So uh, eventually I, I find out that this is uh, the uh, the, uh, the result we are looking for. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, you can find uh, the, res the, the, the link from OEIS, you just uh, Google it, or you use uh, MathWorld to find uh, terms of reference about why this number work. And typically, I think this relates to this problem because uh, this term, this Sterling number S is originally associated with the uh, number of a uh, dis dis distinct uh, uh, so so I mean partition of in partition of a cycles in a uh, uh, chain of integers. So that makes it sound like very close to our train problems. So yeah, I think that's uh that's it. We we I still have a couple more problems, but I think uh, it would be um, good. If we, uh, you know, take a break today 
and uh, uh, talk about in the next part of the problem solving session. And hopefully you learned something very useful today and see you next time. Bye-bye.